congratulations. You've been the best brigade. This is the final dinner. But tonight, the stakes are even higher, because those guys out there are going to be the toughest ever customer we've cooked for. It's the first time I've filled the restaurant up with 50 vegetarians, all wanting to be converted to eating meat. This, quite frankly, is one of the most important meals you'll ever cook, because if we fuck this up, you'll spoil their hopes of becoming meat eaters. Now there's pressure. Yeah. Yes? Are you ready for the challenge? Yes. I'm yeah. always ready. Now, what's the menu, Mel? We, um, um, lobster and potatoes. A really expensive looking caviar. An amazing we're not caviar. allowed to waste. Yeah, an amazing farm caviar. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. It's extraordinary stuff. Now, before we start cooking it, yeah, I want you to understand where it's come from. Yeah, have a quick look at this on there. One of my favorite ingredients in the world sums up food at its finest and most prestigious caviar. Very decadent, very nutty, very creamy. And it's bursting with flavour, like individual pearls exploding in your mouth. Absolutely delicious. But classic wild caviar is under threat. Sturgeon in the Caspian Sea are overfished and close to extinction. So the hunt is on to find alternatives fast. So I'm looking for something sustainable and affordable to blow beluga out of the water when it comes to taste and texture. I'm not going to find it in fucking Nicebridge. I've come to Andalusia in southern Spain which for the past 25 years has hidden one of the Mediterranean's best kept secrets. If this caviar is as good as the real McCoy, the proper beluga, then this could be a fucking amazing find here in Spain. It's the water flowing through these mountains that led the owners of Rio Frio Caviar to set up a farm here after a seven year search for the perfect source. Export manager and fellow Brit Keith Jaggard will be showing me around. Hi, Gordon. Oh, How are you? Nice to meet you, right? Now, are you on half term? You look about 12. <laughs> now, I didn't think it's possible to farm sturgeon. Why are you here in the middle of fucking Spain of all places? The temperature of the water is 13 to 15 degrees right. all year round, and that's because we have the source of the spring at 200 metres away from where we're standing. Drinkable? Drinkable and natural. Which is a benefit to the sturgeon? Of course. So, are we talking about as good as, wild, or better? I'd say better. It's... You've got a big pair of cojones, you know that? A big pair of cojones. Huh? <laughs> yes, I have. Fuck me. <laughs> First, Keith's taking me to see the tiddlers. They're so ugly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and yet so delicious and delicate. Yeah. But it'll be eight years before we can tell the little boys from the big money girls, who can be anything up to the age of 20 before their caviar's ready for harvesting. Oh, God, they're everywhere. But first, I've got to catch one. If you can, grab the head. <laughs> Prehistoric distant relatives of the shark, these big mothers are almost 60 kilos, and to be examined for caviar, they're wrestled out of the water by hand. Okay. Let's get on. It's absolutely beautiful. So how old is this one? This one will probably be between 18, 19 years old. For nearly half that time, the valuable eggs in this fish have been developing. Their size and condition are checked using ultrasound. You can just about see every single egg. I mean, it's honestly identical to going with your wife for an ultrasound, little KY jelly, robbing round, <laughs> looking for the little heartbeat, and oh shit, there's two heartbeats there, you've got twins. Except here we're looking at what, four and a half to five kilos, kilos of, of caviar. caviar. The trick is to catch the eggs at their optimum quality before the fish spawns naturally. But this beauty isn't quite ready yet. Possibly six months. Really? We'll, we'll give it another, another, another scan, right? Uh, and see how it's getting on. If we just try and turn it around. Yeah, my okay. God. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. There we go. And then just slowly push it off, just, just very, very calmly. When the sturgeon are ready, they're killed and sent for a clinical extraction. This looks like a fucking operating theatre. Hola. Hola. Today, Chief Sturgeon Surgeon Javier is entrusting me with the scalpel. Is that too deep? No, 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 no keep going, going keep going. That's good, just keep going. A little yeah. bit. That's perfect, just keep going. OK, let me see. Oh, shit, I can see caviar. Yeah, it starts very far down. Well, I wish you told me. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Look at all that caviar in there. Look at that. Is that all the way up there? Mm. My God. OK, so you can actually see... Look at that. Jesus Christ. You can see the amount of eggs there. Look okay. at all the caviar. <laughs> it's like a bathtub full of fucking caviar. How much is in there? I'm surprised you haven't got a security guard for each sturgeon in there, you know that? <laughs> yeah, we do. Underwater diver. <laughs> we, do. we don't have security guards, but we have big dogs. Do you mind if a little taste, please? No, go ahead. Mm. 
Unbelievable. It does need some salt on there. In terms kind of, of flavour. Fucking hell. It's extraordinary. It's like a treasure. I couldn't wait to learn how to transform these freshly harvested eggs into the delicacy I know and love. So, shall we process? Process? Yeah. Fuck me. Now I'm going back home. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Fuck that. First, the eggs are separated from the membrane. Right. So, you're just gently rubbing it, holding the membrane. And we're not bursting the eggs like this. No. That is beautiful. What's that worth in there now, Keith? We're talking well over £10,000. Oh, my God. They are then rinsed in cold, salted spring water <laughs> before sea salt is added to dramatically enhance the caviar's flavour. You do, I don't want to fuck up. No, 10 grams worth of fucking caviar. OK. Fingers in and just last right, yeah. Faster. Faster. OK. Wow. Very creamy. For me, it doesn't need any more salt. That's delicious. Yeah. Seasoned to perfection and matured for four months, the caviar in this tin alone will be worth three and a half grand. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Really good. Thank Gracias. You. This stuff really does give wild caviar a run for its money, and I've got the perfect recipe to show it off. Right, lobster and potato salad with the most amazing mayonnaise and that special farmed caviar. Tie two lobster tails with string. As the lobster cooks, tail stays nice and straight. Poach for six to seven minutes. Bay leaf, lemon, lime, fennel, star anise, coriander, bang. Parboil the potatoes. Whilst that's cooking, mayonnaise. Add mustard powder and white wine vinegar to the egg yolks. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Slowly add the olive oil. If we don't whisk it enough, it splits. Now, for the exciting part, a little bit of truffle oil. Two or three little drops. Beautiful. Lobster out. It's nice and straight, so it's not easier to slice. Slice the potatoes. Season and drizzle with olive oil. Stoke the potatoes and give the lobster a blast of heat in the pan. Literally 30 seconds each side. That stops the lobster from becoming really chewy and enhances the flavour. Lightly dress a salad and serve. Five nice slices of potato, five nice medallions of lobster, a teaspoon of truffle mayonnaise on the potato. Finishing the salad with this baby. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. My God. It has to be the perfect dish for the last supper. A salad of potato, lobster, Truffle mayonnaise and the most amazing fucking caviar. Oh. How many portions are we doing? Five. five. So we need okay, uh, so five 15. Five fives of what? Fifteen. Fifteen. No, okay. sweet. Five fives of twenty-five. Oh, well twenty-five. Sorry. Excellent. Don't drop them off. <gasps> Jesus <Gordon>. Christ Almighty! <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Fuck me! I've forgotten what a nightmare this is. You know that, right? <laughs> Mel, take the lobster out, darling. Hold on, they're not Otherwise ready. Otherwise, you'll go rubbery. Come no, over, no, your bag's burst. Your bag's bursting, and you've got shit everywhere. No, it's not. It's not all right. Touch that lobster there. It's stone cold. Yeah, then you go to that as a hot lobster. So this is supposed to be the most talented brigade. Yes. Right now we're making biggins look good. I didn't think that was possible. What's that? Okay. Now who piped a, a madam? Oh, fucking hell. Yes. Help me. We have to drop the caviar on the floor. We have to keep going. I'm ready. I'm oh going to send God. it out. Now, that's a thousand pounds worth of caviar, oh, and you just put it on the fucking oh, floor. Oh, what is the one thing I ask you not to do? Drop the caviar. Just come here. Yeah, come Let in. me just show you. Seriously, I want you guys looking good. But if we perform like this, we're going to look fucking stupid, and I'm going to get pissed off. Get a grip a bit, yeah? yeah. And focus for me, OK? okay yes, right. We need a little Four, time please, to get used to a it. A little time with a thousand pounds worth of fucking caviar on the floor. I've never really had lobster before, but I really enjoyed it, and I think this experience has made me want to eat fish probably from now on. It's converted me. That's nice cut on potatoes there, Mel. Very nice, Mary. Lovely. <laughs> Go, please, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is it, last table. And that's the caviar. Oh my god, there's not even one egg on any of them. Anything on your spoon, Mary? And go, very good, go, go, go. Thanks. First of all, empty plates, which looks great. Did you enjoy your starting? I thought that yes. having never had caviar before, yes. the combination with the lobster, mm -hmm. um, you got that nice salty texture with the, the more milder taste of the lobster, and that popping of the caviar in your mouth, I thought mm. it was delicious. I thought it was nice from Greenwich. Mm -hmm. 
annoyingly nice. Yeah. <laughs> Results for the starter, please. What? Uh, the number, okay? Oh, for goodness sake. Of customers that are happy to pay for their starter is. <laughs> 46 out of 50! Yeah. Yeah. Well really best. good. Okay, right, clear down. Let's get ready for the main course, yes? Next on the menu, I go hunting for puffin, learning how to sky fish in Iceland. I'm just worried about standing up on the side of this. And the starter has gone down well, but the real test has yet to come for the vegetarian diners, the veal main course. I'm quite scared about eating the veal. I'm really nervous about trying it. I was OK with the lobster, but now with me, it's another hurdle to get through. Right, time for a very special main course, Janet's veal. British rosé veal, a really nice alternative to beef and one of the most underused meats in the country. Seasoned, hot pan, olive oil. It's a very lean meat, so they go very dry quickly. Literally 30 seconds each side. Rest, masala sauce. Fresh oil in the pan. Shallots. Really important to use the same pan. We want that flavour from the veal being sautéed. Mushrooms. Seasoned. Colour. Masala. Reduce. We're just rinsing the bottom of the pan out for all that amazing flavour. Chicken stock. Boil. Tomatoes, tarragon, chervil, veal. Sit back in the sauce. It just adds that really nice, rich sweetness to the flavour of the veal. Little treasure chest, that British rosé veal. Rosé veal with masala sauce. Done. We're going to pull out all the stops and make sure that Elton didn't die in vain. All right! Mel, don't drop the veal. <laughs> I'll try not to. Right. Now, Mel, be careful, yeah? Whatever you do, don't overcook the veal. It cooks very, very quickly, both sides, in and out. It's a very lean piece of meat, hardly any fat, so it overcooks very quickly. Don't put the um, balsamic vinegar in the veg until everything's cooked, yes? This will be a meal these diners will never, ever forget for the rest of their lives. That's yeah? all we've got to do. That's all we've got to do. <laughs> well done. Go, please. Right. Yes, that was my first meet in 12 years, and it was a, it was pretty good actually. Yeah. I never ever thought veal was something that I would eat, but yeah, I'd probably go for it again after this. La, 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 la. It makes you want to sing when you're doing well. Well, well we're doing well, definitely. Okay. I can't believe the way you're working. It's night and day from the starters. I told well, you. Well done. You. We just needed to start. <laughs> You're not letting Elton down. Thank you for that. It's amazing what you can get in Iceland these days. For the past 12 weeks, I've travelled the world hunting for the freshest and finest ingredients. For my final journey, I've come to the end of the fucking earth. Iceland is a stunning volcanic melting pot on the edge of the Arctic Circle. It has some of the most extraordinary and beautiful landscapes known to man and a unique food world to match. This place is home to rotten shark, whale meat and something I've always wanted to try, puffin. Here they have a puffin feast on the menu. I'm intrigued to see what it delivers in terms of texture and flavour and more importantly, I'm dying to find out what it actually tastes like. I'm sampling a starter of fresh salad with smoked puffin. Thank you. And where's the puffin, darling? It's all over here. Oh, the dark bits. See, it's hiding in the bushes again. Yes, it is. See? Where is it? Thank you. Never tasted anything like it before. I actually quite like it. It's very creamy, slightly gamey, a little bit salty, but quite intriguing because it's very smooth on the palate. And obviously, a fucking nightmare to catch because there's hardly any on my fucking plate. Puffin is such an amazing new ingredient, I'm keen to grill the local chefs about it. Fascinating for me, my first time eating puffin. Very dark, 
Yeah, very dark. Rich bird. Yeah. yeah. And it smells a little bit like liver. It's quite, yeah. quite, quite yeah, dark. Like lump liver. Dark beet, a mm -hmm. little bit like game, like you said. Yeah. And yeah, really rich flavor. I enjoyed it. I'm intrigued by it. Thank you. Having tasted puffin for the first time, I want to find out where they come from and learn the age-old way of hunting them. So I'm moving further south. I've seen some airports in my time, but this is taking the piss. I'm heading to the Westman Islands, 10 miles off Iceland's south coast. There are more Atlantic puffin on these remote islands than anywhere else in the world. The birds are a traditional food hunted for centuries by locals like Oliver Tear. Ollie, how are you? Hi there. Hi there, Gordon. Good to see you. Welcome to Westman Islands. Thank you. Now, yeah. you look like a little puffin. <laughs> Bulky, Thank sturdy, you. yeah? Thank you. Full of stamina. Yeah. Can you fly? Not really, but Not really. Uh, I'm always hoping to. So you've eaten a lot of puffin. In the UK, yeah, yeah. yeah, everyone right now will be thinking, oh my god, they're cute, they're beautiful, yeah, they're lovely yeah, beaks. Yeah, yeah. We've got them as teddy bears for the kids. Uh, okay, okay. Why yeah. in the hell are you eating them? Well, to begin with, there are a lot of them. Around here, there are four or five million puffins. So they're in abundance. The traditional food in Westman Islands are the puffins, especially yes. smoked puffins. So it goes back centuries ago in terms of a staple food yeah, supply yeah, yeah. that the island survived on. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just tastes yeah. very good. The method Oliver uses to catch them is hundreds of years old. What is that thing? It's called haur. How? Haur. Haur. Yeah. Well, it's close enough. OK, let's just call it a pole vault with a net on the end. OK, you can call it whatever you like. I call it Howard. There are no puffings on this open part of the island, so it's perfect for practising sky fishing. I would wait for the puffin flying this way, slowly, after they and turn, and then they will fly into the net, take the puffin out, and break the net. Come a little go. The bird is flying that direction. Follow, 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 follow. Poof, back. Why can't we just get a gun and shoot them? <laughs> this is more of a sport. Yeah, but I shoot them, you catch them in the net. Yes. As they fall out of the sky. The official hunting season doesn't start until tomorrow, which gives me plenty of time to perfect my swing. Got him. Yeah, OK, OK. Got okay, it, got okay, it. Okay. I got it. <laughs> and cook another part of my puffin menu, a traditional Icelandic bread. Right, I'm going to make a really nice rustic bread to go with the puffins for tomorrow. I'm adding yeast to rye flour, wholemeal flour, salt and sugar. A little well in the centre. Add the milk in three stages. Knead the dough until firm. And that's what we're looking for. That really nice, smooth, beautiful, rustic dough. Into the tin. I'm finishing the bread with blodurg, a traditional Icelandic flour. When you rub them together, it releases this amazing oil. It's a sort of cross between lavender and rosemary. As that cooks, it's going to perfume the bread. It smells amazing. Lid on. Now, I'm going to bake that bread in the biggest oven I've ever seen in my entire fucking life. This is Mount Elfell, a volcano that erupted and changed the face of the islands just 35 years ago, with the crater still hot enough to bake a loaf. So this is the oven. And the deeper you go, yep. the hotter it is. Yes. Honestly, I mean, that is absolutely incredible. Uh, the heat? Yeah, feel how hot yeah, that is. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah. It's extraordinary. How long in the oven? 12 hours. 12 hours. Yeah. Only the Vikings would think about digging deep <laughs> under a volcanic <laughs> rock. Hard work being a, a baker. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I don't mind putting the work in, especially if you're not paying for the gas. <laughs> The bread will bake overnight, and tomorrow the official puffing hunting season on the Westman Islands will begin. Graham, how are you? I'm very well. Good to see you. Welcome to the F-Worth. And thank you very much. Enjoying your food? Now, are you being sparing with Elton because there's not enough to go around? Well, we've got 50 to serve. So. Yes, and Elton's not so big. No. He's a calf. And that's why he's veal. <laughs> exactly that. That's why he's on your plate. You've never eaten veal before? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah no, I'm not, like, you know, sentimental yeah. about food. I, yeah. You know, I don't care. Yeah. But think about, 
<laughs> think, think about the poor calves having to put up with Janet's reporting for that length of time. In fairness, uh, was it an abattoir or a suicide uh, pact? <laughs> <It's just laughs> combination of two. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Elton and David just holding, yeah. holding the hooves. Grim death. <laughs> jumping in there. But you've never I been hate, vegetarian. I hate, I hate, no, God, no. No, no, no I've no. thought about it. Not really, no, because no. I don't, you know, I think it's dead now. Yeah. So, you know. Don't say that actually, like, there's a lot of them in tonight, you know that. Oh, I heard, yes. Convert, convert. Yeah. Now, are you excited about the rest of the challenge? Do you know, I am, yeah. because I, well, I, I'm nervous as well. Right, Because it's clearly a Gordon Ramsay, you, you know. I'm nervous too, I mean, I, I no, have one of them all. No, you're not. Now, you used to be a waiter. I did. Yeah, for how long? Uh, probably altogether about eight or nine years. Good, let's see if that big mouth of yours can still please the punters, yeah? Okay. A good waiter sells the specials of the restaurant professionally. Yes. Sell this aperitif ah, to the table. Th this is a lovely aperitif called Pussy. <laughs> there, have some of that. It's lovely. Now, lovely. in fairness, it's been a while since I've tasted this, but <laughs> I'm, it, I know it's very popular <laughs> with many people. Uh, uh, Gordon, you'd like to try that? What's so good about this drink? Uh, this? Well, it's got some natural energy in the pussy. <laughs> go on, taste your pussy. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> Is it good? Um, you got to try some as well. All right, I'll taste a little bit. OK. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It's a bit like your beer. It hasn't changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Convince? Would you take it? I could see what it was. So could see what it was. Big leather. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. Look forward to seeing the kitchen. Yes. All right. Well see done. you in a bit. Bye. I thought that actually meat would be something that I would really detest, but actually, I find it fantastic. Yeah. How was your bill, young man? Um. Would it be bad to say really good? I'm so pleased. You know that. That was an amazing journey to get them to the table. But I feel really bad because I haven't eaten meat for such a long time. How long? 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. You don't even look that so old. <laughs> How old are you? 26. 26. And you've never eaten meat in 20 years? I had a bite of a bacon sandwich about four years ago. And that's uh, it? That's it. Well, that's fantastic news. I just think, 20 years, all those vegetables. No wonder your hair's so curly. <laughs> um, extraordinary. <laughs> I'm so pleased we've converted you. I really, really like the beer. I really think compliments a meal. Dougal, nice to see you, sir. You're looking very smart. Now, that, for me, was an amazing journey, yes? How was the experience for you drinking it alongside the veal? I think in this particular case, you got a lot of sweetness there mm -hmm. in the beer. And the veal, for me, was sweet. It mm -hmm. had a caramel flavour on the outside yeah. the searing. And the two complemented each other beautifully. Yeah. And there's that oaky character, just a little yeah. hint of that sort of yeah. vanilla. Yeah. Uh, I think the whole lot went together beautifully. Better than the wine, I thought. Thank you for your help. Couldn't have done without you. Yeah, well done. Much appreciated. <laughs> that is delicious. Um, good to see you. Thank you so much. Hi, Tom. Hello, Janet. Hi. Hi. Job well done. Yeah. Tremendous veal. Yeah, the veal tastes great. Delicious. Absolutely Absolutely fantastic. Quality, fantastic. amazing. Absolutely. Tom, did you enjoy the beer? I thought it was a good beer. It was definitely a proper ale. Yeah, proper ale. It wasn't a lager. No. It was definitely a supping in a country pub. <laughs> right, results of main course. Tough out there, 50 vegetarians. They're not just normal punters. They arrived here this evening to have meat for the first time in years. And I'm not talking about six, seven, eight months, I'm talking about years, five, ten, sometimes 15, 20 years. Mm -hmm. OK, the number of people oh, okay, is there like a that are willing to pay I can't look. is... Stop it! <laughs> 46 out of 50! That is amazing! That is amazing! You definitely did not let Elton down. Well done. Well done. Coming up, I go back to the field of dreams, where my football career started... Home sweet home. ..and ended. There's some fantastic memories and there's some tragic memories. ..and Graham Norton's making a peach of a dessert in the recipe challenge. I'm going to make a delicious roast peach and amaretto dessert. As Gordon might say, it's sweet, juicy and full of flavour. <laughs> Right, it's recipe challenge time, and tonight's challenger is comedian presenter, national treasure, Graham Norton. But there's more at stake, because whichever dessert the blind tasters choose will be served at all the diners. So, are you ready? I'm very ready. Are you, what are you doing? Basically, it's uh, like a roast baked peaches Rice. with um, amaretto and lavender. Here's one I made earlier. 
I'm gonna make a delicious roast peach and amaretto dessert. As Gordon might say, it's sweet, juicy, and full of flavor. Boiling water. Peel. Slice them in two. Take out that little pity bit. That's quite hard to do. Fucker. Look after that. There you go. Bowl. Amaretto with maple syrup, sugar. Slop that around a bit. Perhaps you should have tasted that. That's fine. Tray, pour the oven. Five minutes already. Lavender. Oven. Five minutes. A plate. Creme fraiche. Amaretti biscuits. Lavender. Delicious. Roast peaches with amaretto dessert. Done. So Graham's doing a roasted peach stroke braised peach with lavender. Yeah, so in the oven. In o the oven. Yeah, oven and cooked. And served on uh, a plate. On a <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, blood, Gordon? <laughs> <laughs> served on. I thought it sounds as delicious so, as it was. <laughs> so Graham's doing a dish, roasted peaches with lavender served on a plate with amaretti biscuits. I'm going to smart ask. Roasted peaches with a delicious lemon and lime and basil creme fraiche. Water, sugar. Boil. Take your knife. Peaches. Basil. Poach. Take them out of the syrup. Peel. And the stone should just fall out. Syrup. Grand Marnier. Boil. Ice and sugar. Into the oven. Six to seven minutes. Beautifully roast. Creme fraiche. Lemon zest. Lime zest. Basil. Mix. Marzipan. Roll out your marzipan, nice and thin. Cut. Glaze. Assemble. Creme fraiche. Marzipan. Pinch out the oven onto the creme fraiche. And sit the other half on top. Raspberry coulis. Toasted almonds. Roasted peaches with lemon, lime and basil creme fraiche. Done. Now, why did you choose this dish? Uh, because I tried it in a, in a restaurant, oh, nice. and this was delicious, yeah. and I thought, very simple, and I could probably cook this. Yeah. And do you get a chance to cook at home? Cooking's fun when there's time to do it. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Because it's not to be having people over, but if it's stressful, what's the yeah. point? So you're going to blanch them first in, like, a... I've done um, that. Syrup. Peel them. Yeah, doing it. All so right. you don't like the skin. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the skin of the peaches. So it looks like you made some effort. Do you right. know what I mean? You actually did... Uh, this is the only bit of cooking involved. The brigade will be so happy so... <laughs> uh, if I win, because it is a piece of piss. <laughs> Now, you used to be a waiter. I did. Yep. Were you a good waiter? Uh, I sometimes. I started off being good, and then you just, you know, people are making fun, and you just say, it's your fucking dinner. <laughs> You'll eat again. <laughs> you know, but where's our food? I'm guessing it's in the kitchen. <laughs> I don't have it. Did you ever thicken anybody's vinaigrette when you were pissed off with a customer? We did do something horrible to somebody's coffee once. Uh -huh. We did something in the cafetiere before we put the hot water in. And we just did it behind the bar, so, like, someone could have seen us do it. What exactly did he do? There was, might have been a little piss in the coffee. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the wrong person drank it. <laughs> oh, shit. The restaurant, the restaurant is shut now, but oh, it's not it? our fault. OK, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little touch of Grand Marnier. Oh, the, the old Grand Marnier. Ah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Over the top, and then a little bit of the sort of cooking juice. Do you like to take food to the bedroom? Is it something you sort of... No. 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 I mean, it's fine in hotels. Yes. I think sex in hotels is very different to sex at home. Yes. Because sex at home, someone's got to clean this up. <laughs> you know, I mean, laundry will be done. Yeah. I remember trying to be romantic once with rose petals. They stain the fuck out of sheets. It looked like I killed someone. <laughs> <laughs> Are you romantic? Um, I try. Serious. But not really, no. No? See, because how long have you been married now? Uh, 11 years. 11 years? 11 years, years I know. See, that's a mystery to me. A mystery in terms of...? Of, of just staying with someone for 11 years. Really? I sat, I sat at dinner with people last night. That they were married for 25 years. 25 years? 25 and what years. And what, what, what was the, the secret behind that one? I didn't ask. Oh, no. well, actually, the secret is that the husband is Denzel Washington. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> who's going to leave him? <laughs> right. Oh, you, off we go. Whoa, uh, top uh, or bottom? Uh, just in there. <laughs> <laughs> just in there. Look at you. Just like that. <laughs> 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 Excellent. <laughs> right, I'm going on top, they go in the oven, we come back and we find out which dessert's going to be served to the diners. Are you confident? Uh, do you know, quietly confident. That doesn't look as good as I thought it would. <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm taking my fight for health eating back to my old stomping ground. 
As a boy, I dreamt of playing professional football for my favourite local team, Glasgow Rangers. My dream came true when I was spotted by a scout in the mid-80s and I joined the youth team here at Ibrox. I've got so many great memories, including playing alongside one of Scotland's football legends. Coisty, perhaps one of the most recognised, one of the most famous players ever to grace the field at Ibrox. Coist making the run and a marvellous opening goal. I remember him well. And the one thing that struck you about Gordon, the one that's never, ever changed and never will change, he's a, he's a competitive so-and-so that wants to, wants to do the best and, and be the best that he can. Fuck. Wow. Home sweet home. Beautiful. There's some fantastic memories and there's some tragic memories. There's no other club like it anywhere in the world. Wow. The terrible memories were coming through those main doors and being sent upstairs to the boss's office. And to be told that you're no longer part of Rangers. That's a big kick in the bollocks, trust me. I got released on the back of an injury, um, smashed my cartilage, and then they said they'd keep an eye on me, but that's just a polite fuck off, really, that's all. Do you know what? Any form of pain that I experienced here was eradicated when I won my third Michelin star. And had I not had the upset in football here with Ibrooks, I don't think I'd be the chef I am today. When I played, we ate steak and chips, pie and beans, and training was basic. Run till you drop. Now that's all changed for the better, but football astringent diets can be bland, and most of them have never set foot in the kitchen, which is something I'd like to change. I'm at Murray Park Rangers training ground to meet my old friend Alan McCoy to see what they're up to. Hopefully he hasn't put too much weight on. Oh, never, <laughs> never mind looking at your watch, boy. <laughs> How are you doing? You've lost weight. I've washed a wee bit since, huh? you, since you gave me that telling off last time I saw you. I'm very happy to be here. So what, you, what are you training? Uh, yeah. We're going to do a bit of training, a bit of work and stuff like that. First, the warm-up. That's <laughs> 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 oh, shocking, by the way. Who is that? Then I joined the squad for a full-on training session. Yeah! Times like this, when you seriously get to understand how much you miss it. Followed by three punishing quick-fire matches. Hey, you did well, sure. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Training over, I'm joining Ali for an infamous Rangers routine, the ice tub. Jesus I've got the perfect thing to warm our frozen cockles. A tasty hot lunch for the lads that should prove healthy food doesn't need to be bland and boring. Right, I'm in the kitchen of the Murray Park. Here, Coyce, you know, and this man, Barry Ferguson, captain of Rangers and Scotland. When was the last time you were in the kitchen? I think it was the two Tuesdays ago. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're going to do the most amazing chicken dish. Poached and sautéed chicken breast, haricot bean salad and balsamic roasted fennel. We're kicking off with the fennel cut into quarters. Smell it. And a seed. Oh. Lovely. Nice and fresh and fragrant. Seasoned, drizzled with olive oil and balsamic vinegar. You never cook at home? No. I would love to. Yeah. My wife cooks. Straight into the oven. 200 degrees, 12 to 15 minutes. Does it get any harder? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Move your ass. Chicken breast. Free range. High in protein, low in fat, just what these players need to keep them running. We're just going to poach them now for six minutes. Half a bowl of garlic, a little bit of thyme, rosemary. Make the chicken a lot more fragrant. We're just trying to make it a little bit more exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah? More and no sauces, no cream, no butter, mm -hmm. and something that you can get up and feel energised with. Gonna make a vinaigrette, Barry. Right, let's go. Okay. Mustard, olive oil, balsamic vinegar. Go easy on the salt, because that dehydrates right. you even quicker. Now for the second half. Bean salad. Beans packed with protein, olives help to season and stop them becoming a little bit bland. A couple of tablespoons of uh, vinaigrette. This is baby spinach. Baby spinach. Yeah. Packed with iron. Tossed with basil leaves and a splash of the dressing. Chicken out and skin side down. I never thought I'd see the day. Scotland's captain and the most prolific goal scorer Rangers ever, Golden Boot, <laughs> in front of the stove. Tell you what, you don't have that sweat on, Gordon. Yeah, don't sweat in the chicken yeah. here, Ali. Yeah, okay, is that the idea? <laughs> Anyone complains about it being fucking salty, I know who to blame. <laughs> Half a ladle of stock in there. 
That's going to act almost like a bit of a sauce, really. Crispy skin. Great. Yeah, nice moist chicken inside, yeah. Drizzle the roasted fennel with vinaigrette. To serve, a handful of spinach salad. And just sit the fennel on top. Get a nice, even distribution of the beans and the olives. Slice the chicken and spoon on some vinaigrette. In we go. Excellent. You know they're going to say they don't like it whether they like it or not. You know that. So, Ali, you can do that again for the guys. I would do that again for the boys. Certainly. Yes. Good. 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 Coming up, I'm back in stunning Iceland. Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> On the edge of a cliff, risking life and limb to hunt for puffin. I'm shitting myself. Relax. Be part of the nature. Welcome back. Now, time to find out the results of the recipe challenge and which dessert will be served to our diners. That does look quite nice, though, I have it to say. It does look quite nice. See, I'm a big fan of the white plate, but I think for a dessert, you can go a bit colourful. <laughs> right, Jose. Good luck, Graham. And to you, no. sir. Yeah, and to you. <laughs> oh, yes. Your hands are all sticky. Of course they are. I'm covered in maple syrup. Hello. Hi there. Hello. Hello. First one. And the second. I really think the texture so, of the peach is quite nice. Cream works very well with the peach. Oh, I like the almonds in there. Yeah, I love the love of the fragrance. It's really nice. <laughs> okay. I think the presentation is absolutely terrific. Yeah, it does I, look I, really nice. I think this is presented a bit more nicely than the last dish. I much prefer the sauce than having the lavender. I mm -hmm. think it works a lot better. I actually find the, the, the really sauce nice. a bit too sharp in this one. I actually prefer the previous one with the honey. You find that? I get nervous about this bit. Yeah, I'm yeah. a little bit nervous. No, no, because those little bits of lavender flowers, last challenge of the series. OK. Oh, look at that face. Oh, no, don't look I don't like know that. what that means. I don't know no, what no, that means. No, no, but how did it go down? Well, it was close. Oh, God, it yeah. always softens you up with that one. That, this, this before it comes in, it gives it a low blow. So what do they say about them? Well, they did like the uh, marzipan and the raspberry and yours. Yeah, of course they would, yeah, nice. But they so, liked the, the balance of flavour from Graham's yeah. one, sir. Forget the balance. Whose dessert is getting served to the diners? Come on! If you want a job, Jose, come on! <laughs> come on! Don't look at him like that! Gordon, you are. Yes! Sorry, Green. Yeah! Well done. Well look at done. that place. I'm so strong! No, I'm still gonna Your cook mother will be I'll, I'll still be cooking it at home. I don't care. I don't care. I can't believe they like marzipan. I thought your dish was delicious. Thank yes. you very much. I get a little bit too much alcohol for me, but it was delicious. Um, no, that's so not true. <laughs> Never enough alcohol. It's been a pleasure having you the kitchen. It's Seriously. been a pleasure being uh, here, and I just feel sorry for the brigade now, who have to cook your really <laughs> dreary, complicated dessert. <laughs> right, do me a favour. Yeah? Fuck off out of my kitchen now. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Good to see you. Take care, good to see you. All right, cheers, Gordon. Take Bye. Care. Thank you, Graham. Bye. Yes! I've travelled 1,200 miles to the Westman Islands off the south coast of Iceland to hunt a delicious local delicacy, Puffin. It's the first day of the season, and to catch them, we're heading even further afield to one of Ollie's best hunting spots. So where are we going to hunt the puffins? Uh, it's on the other side of the, the island. Yeah. yeah. In the middle? No, not in the middle. On the edge. On the edge? Yeah. What do uh, you mean? Like that? On a cliff like this. Uh... Oh, shit. Ollie, you're mad. <laughs> this is Ecliver A, one of the Westman's 14 uninhabited islands. It was difficult to access from the water, and having clambered to the top for an hour, I couldn't quite believe where I ended up. We're perched on the edge of a cliff, with an 80-metre drop into the North Atlantic Ocean. I'm shitting edge. myself. Relax. Be part of the nature. The puffins circle the edge, catching the wind, and it didn't take long for Ollie to show me exactly how it's done. Yep. Yeah! Ah, that, that was quick! Was... Yep. You hold it like this. Hold it like that. Yep. Uh, under the wings, yes. Under the wings. Yep. Uh, the first one of the season is released. Ready? Beautiful. <laughs> you are one lucky little fucker. <laughs> ah! Right in my fucking nose. It likes your nose. Shit. <laughs> this <guy. laughs> Fucker sliced my nose. You little bastard. Ready? Yeah. And go. That's the last time I'm kissing a fucking puffin. <laughs> right, stop fucking around. We're on the side of a cliff. Yeah. Huh? At 250 feet, this wasn't going to be easy. Oh, very close, very close. 
I'm just worried about standing up on the side of this. Well, you shouldn't worry too much. No, forget that. Forget that. Ah. Ollie makes sky fishing look easy, but I spent three hours on the cliff without catching a thing. It's a little bit far. There's no way on earth I can go home with a big fucking cut on my nose and no puffins, trust me. It's a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. Moving to the other side of the island, we were hoping our luck might change. Uh, oh, yo. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I was not letting that one go. OK. No chance. Hey. Out. Okay. <laughs> you got one. Shit. <laughs> You're one star. Jesus Christ <laughs> almighty. Uh. <laughs> it had taken five hours, but I'd finally got the hang of it. Jesus. <laughs> Fantastic. That was high, that one, though. That's, that's good. Huh? Very good. Puffin number two. Yeah. We could have gone on catching for hours, but I only needed a couple of puffins to cook with, so I decided to set my third one free. I'm going to let this one go. <laughs> you know that. First day of the season. Uh... You got two. I got two. Yeah. That's a good number. That's a good number. Let's go. Back on the main island, Ollie showed me the best way to debreast the birds. Just break. One leg. Snap and break. Yep. Right. And then do it like ah, this. Okay. It's ready to do. That's you incredible. Yeah. In here you have the heart. The heart, yeah. Yeah. You want one? Would you eat that? Yeah. <laughs> Iceland's very own Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> then it was my turn. Oh, you have a heart as well. <sighs> Ollie, come on. Come on. Don't be a chicken. It's a puffin. You're bitten by one and then you can eat it. Doesn't taste bad. I can't believe you just made me eat that hard. <laughs> right, Hannibal, let me show you how to cook them fucking properly. Yeah? You stay here. Yeah? I look forward to it. Thank Unbelievable. you. Unbelievable. The volcanic bread I made yesterday turned out to be a big hit with the locals because overnight it got nicked. But it was the puffin I was here for and I couldn't wait to cook with it. Marinated puffin breast in Brennevin. Take the breast off the bone. Just a tad larger than a pigeon breast, but 100 times tastier. I'm making a marinade for the puffin with crushed juniper berries, salt, pepper, and olive oil. Two thirds olive oil and one third Brennevin. Brennevin's a local liqueur, like a, a schnapps. Mmm, lovely. And then puffin straight into the marinade. Whilst the puffin marinades, I'm making a salad with skier, an Icelandic yogurt, cucumber, garlic, and mint. The nice thing about this cucumber salad, it cools down the richness of the puffin. Just slice through the breast. Get your rosemary twig, push it through. And the nice thing about that, as it cooks, it perfumes inside that puffin breast. It's a very lean bird, so I don't want this thing to dry out. For the barbecue, cherry tomatoes on the vine, drenched with olive oil and balsamic vinegar. And now for the puffin, straight on the barbecue. Lovely. Literally one minute each side. And once I barbecue them, they're going back in the marinade. Nice. Bread. Now, unfortunately, our bread got nicked last night, so this is one Ollie cooked at his house. The tomatoes just sat on the bread. Skin, cucumber salad, and then this, a puffin breast. Just pull out the rosemary. Wow, that is delicious. And that is our perfect puffin, fit for any fucking Viking. Ollie's invited his sons down to see if my puffin passes the test. I'm dying to see what you think in terms of flavour. Have you ever eaten it that rare? No. This tastes much better than I ever expected. Really? Mm. Yeah. Good, good man. Good. For me, the flavour of puffin is unique. I love it. And here's the good news. Yeah? Now I've got my licence. Yeah. I'm coming back. <laughs> You've got your licence. <laughs> yes. Then we have a real huh? competition. of the peaches and the coulis just went really well with the sweet marzipan, which is brilliant. It's like a little mini explosion of happiness in my mouth. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say this is shit. <laughs> 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 
time for the results for the dessert. Right, the number of diners that are willing to pay for the dessert is oh. 43 out of 50. Well Yay! done. We've got 135 out of 150. <laughs> Jose, champagne, please. Let's go. Well done. Thank you. Fucking well done. Good luck with the bacon sandwiches tomorrow morning. <laughs>